Hi everyone, it's Brandy from Brush by Brandy, and this week you're back on my YouTube channel for another tutorial. We're gonna be working on these chests behind me. So I actually have a matching set of two of these, and I really wrestled in my head with what to do with them. They're so pretty, but they're huge, and so I wasn't sure, do I do them in different finishes or the same finishes to keep them together? So I think I'm gonna do them, uh, I don't know. You guys wait and see. I'll show you on this video. Uh, but they're really pretty. They have a great shape um, with lots of curves and I want to keep the finishes pretty clean and simple. I need these to sell quickly because they're huge and I don't want to have to store them. So I actually chose to use some Dixie Belle silk paint and the color I chose is Wharf and I haven't done a piece in Wharf yet and I don't know why because I'm pretty sure it's my new favorite color of silk. It's this beautiful blue gray color. Uh, it's got so much depth to it. And then I'm going to be using the Art Deco bird pattern um, decoupage paper from Dixie Belle. And these two are a perfect combo. So I'm thrilled. Uh, this color inspiration was perfect. So I feel like they're nice and sophisticated. They're rich, um, very classy. They've got some nice beefy hardware. I'm really excited for these. So let's go ahead and tackle some decoupage. Let's use some Dixie Belle silk and let's go ahead and get started on these. Here's where I started on these. I picked these up off my local Facebook marketplace. They have great lines, but they're huge. Like I said, I have a matching pair, so I'm gonna be working on them side by side. I, of course, enlisted help from my favorite assistant. My husband, Sean, is my biggest supporter. And when I really need help with some stuff, I can call him and he always jumps in to help me. So he came out and helped me clean these pieces. I'm using Dixie Belle White Lightning Cleaner that I've dissolved into a spray bottle of water. And then just making sure I get around all the moldings to get them nice and clean. Um, no matter what cleaner you use, you always want to make sure that you rinse them, rinse it off with a coat of water afterwards to get rid of any cleaning residue. At some point during the process, whether it's in the beginning when I'm cleaning or in the end when it's done, I usually always flip my pieces onto their backs. And that's because you want to make sure you get up underneath as well. There's usually always some spider babies hiding in the corners, so you definitely don't want to ignore the underside of your pieces. This set is fairly modern, so I'm not worried about it being a bleeder. Um, I'm also planning to use silk paint, which has a built-in stain blocking primer. So I feel like I'm good. I don't need to use a stain blocker on these, but they do have a pretty shiny finish on them. And for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and use Slick Stick, which is a gripping primer. The other option of, on these would be to go ahead and scuff sand and paint, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some Slick Stick on them. Sean rarely picks up a brush, but he jumped right in to help me with these, and I super appreciate it. He's brushing on a coat of Slick Stick using my Dixie Belle Mini. Slick Stick goes on just like a paint, and this is going to add a little bit of bite to the surface to give my paint something to grip onto. You always want to apply two coats of Slick Stick, and I make sure I apply it in long, even, linear strokes. This is the base for my paint, so I want to make sure it goes on nice and smooth. So these tops are pretty interesting and they kind of have this really cool inlay pattern um, but they were pretty damaged you can see this is how the original finish was it was all chipping and peeling um, so it definitely needed to come off um, here's some more spots of damage these were not in great condition so i didn't hesitate to set my brush on it and stuff and get my slick stick up onto the top but I do want to go ahead and stain these um, into a wood grain, and so I need to finish sanding them. They do have some of this really interesting um, detail, and I'm going to go ahead and leave this. I think it's really pretty. So I'm just using my Surf Prep sander. I have an 80 grit paper on here, and I'm just going to go ahead and finish sanding this side of it. So you guys know I chose silk paint and wharf for one look on these, but I have two and I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep them in matching finishes. So we're going to have some fun with these and you're actually going to get to see these in three different finishes on the same piece. Um, I did this both just to have fun with it and also so you can kind of see what a transformation just a different color can make. So with that decided, let's go ahead and have some fun with these. I'm gonna go ahead and put on a coat of Dixie Belle Silk in Baja Gray. This is one of my favorite colors in the Silk line. It's just very universal. It goes with just about everything, so it's very easy to use. A nice soft gray. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and brush on a coat over my two coats of Slick Stick with a light sanding beforehand. I make sure I use long, even linear strokes, and you'll notice with the Silk, I just work small areas at a time. I do like to lightly mist my surface with water, 
Silk has a lower tolerance for water than the chalk mineral paint does, so I make sure that I don't use it in, ex in excess. It's a very, very, very light amount, just enough to lubricate my surface, but that light mist on the surface helps my brush glide over it ever so easily, um, and I shouldn't need any more. Once I've got my entire surface covered, I come back and make sure I even out my brush strokes. You can see the reflection in this paint. It is super smooth. Are you ready to see our first look on these? This is Dixie Belle Silk in Baja Gray. It's two coats of the Baja Gray. I went ahead and put my hardware on. There's no need to top coat the silk. It has a built-in top coat. I did use um, a wash of Dixie Belle Coffee Bean over the top as a light stain, and this is our first look. Let's go ahead and try another one. So for my second look on these, I actually chose Dixie Belle Silk, and the color is called Conch, like a conch shell. These have very soft, curvy lines, so I felt like the pink really brought out the feminine side in them, so we're going from gray over to pink. Right over the top of my Silk in Baja Gray, I'm just going to go ahead and lay on a coat of Silk in Conch. This is a fun color, totally different than the gray that we started with, so we're really going to see these in a completely different personality using the different color. You can see the conch gets really good coverage going over top of the Baja Gray. This would need two coats if you were doing a final look. I ended up just doing one, just enough so we could get pictures and really get a look for this. So here it is in a more feminine spin. Don't worry, you're going to see these again at the end. But what do you think? Do you have a favorite so far? Uh, this pink is really nice and soft and airy. It feels very light and beachy, a really pretty shade of pink. We're still going to play with more colors, but let's go ahead and work on some other parts of this project. I did tell you that I was going to use this decoupage paper from Dixie Belle on my drawer sides. This paper is called Art Deco Bird Pattern from Dixie Belle. It's one of their rice decoupage papers, and I'm going to go ahead and apply it to the drawer sides. So this has a nice dark background on it, and my drawers are already stained in a dark wood. If they were light colored or uneven or anything, I would want to make sure I put a coat of even paint underneath the paper because it can be semi-translucent. But this dark background is going to be perfect for this paper. I brush on a nice thick coat of Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat. I love the satin for decoupage because it's nice and thick. Um, it doesn't run and it goes on in a slightly blue tint so I can see where I've laid it. I lay my coat underneath on nice and thick, lay my paper over the top and then a nice thick coat over the top of the paper. This is gonna let it seep through from underneath and also seep through from down top. And this is gonna make my paper join nicely into my drawer side. Once it's dry, I'll come back and give it another coat of my satin clear coat over top. To do both pieces, um, all the drawer sides, I ended up using a total of three sheets of this decoupage paper, but it is the perfect accent and it works with all of the colors that I'm gonna be showing you on these pieces today. So I'm just working one drawer at a time. I use a razor knife to cut my decoupage paper and then use the satin clear coat to lay it on. Let's go ahead and finish up this set of drawer sides.
I told you in the intro we were going to use some silk paint in the color called Wharf, and so let's go ahead and get that coat laid on. This color is stunning. I've never used it before, you guys, but it's probably one of my new favorites. It leans a little bit blue, but it's definitely a gray. It's very universal, so I feel like this could also go in any decor, kind of like the Baja gray could. Just a light mist to my surface and then I brush over it using my Dixie Belle Mini, using long, even linear strokes, making sure I smooth out my brush strokes before I'm done. With these few steps, a coat of silk goes on like a breeze and it lays on incredibly smooth. It's just a beautiful, luxurious paint. I of course want to make sure that I get in around all of my drawer bottom and my drawer edges as well, making sure these are nice and smooth. We've seen a bunch of colors of silk go onto these pieces. Let's go ahead and work on some of our other finishes. So once I had two coats of my Dixie Belle Silk in Wharf on, um, I let it dry overnight and came back and wiped on a coat of Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat. I'm just using the blue Gator Hide sponge and wiping on a thin layer. Silk does have a built-in top coat, but you absolutely can top coat it if you want a little bit more sheen to it. So my intent on these, the reason that I'm using the satin clear coat over the top is because I want to put on a black wax, but I want to be able to wipe it back so it's perfectly clean and smooth and only falls into the low points on these. I really want to use the black wax to bring out the crevices and the details. The clear coat over top is going to seal off my paint so that when I go to wipe back my black wax, it wipe backs nice and clean. Silk doesn't absorb the black wax like the chalk mineral paint would, but it still absorbs some, and I really want it to absorb none. So that's what I'm using the satin clear coat for, is to close off that paint so it gives me a nice clean finish. When I'm wiping on clear coat with the blue Gator Hide sponge, I want to make sure that I don't have any spots that gather up in the corners. You can have a tendency to get drips using the sponge and need to come back and clear those up with a brush. I let my satin clear coat dry overnight, and now I can come back and massage in some black wax. This is Dixie Belle Besting Wax in Black, and I'm applying it using the French Tip Brush. Natural bristle brushes are ideal for waxing because they have more rigidity than a synthetic bristle brush, and that's exactly what I need here. You can see how hard I'm being on these bristles massaging that wax into my surface. So I chose black wax for these pieces because they have a lot of natural distressing that was in the original finish and I want to bring that out. You can kind of see some of the scratch and scrape marks, the pitting that they have. The black wax is going to sink into all of those as well as the um, details around the moldings and it's really going to accentuate them. Once I massage the black wax over the entire surface, I'm going to come back and wipe it back with a rag. This rag stays pretty dirty, so I come back with actually a second rag that's a little more clean, and then you can see how easily I'm able to wipe it back. This is a result of having that satin clear coat over the top of my paint. I buff back all of the excess wax that I can get off my surface, letting it sink into the pits. It does change the color ever so slightly of my paint, but I love the little bit of moodiness that it adds. Um, I don't want to wipe away my wax too much in the crevices. Anywhere that I wipe away too much, I just come back and apply another little thin coat, and then I clean that up a little bit too. This next image is pretty cool. I wanted to show you what it looks like with black wax on one side of my drawer and no wax on the other, so you can see what a difference it makes. It really brings out all the details on this piece. So on the left-hand side, I've got no wax. On the right-hand side, I add my black wax, and all of a sudden, all those details come to life. I'm going to repeat my same black wax process over the side of this piece. Um, it's quite an arm workout. If you're not sweating by the time you wax an entire piece of furniture, then you're doing it wrong. It's almost like waxing a car. Apply the wax, let it set for a few minutes, come back and buff away your excess. In this case, I'm not using the wax at all for protection. I'm using it purely decoratively. And that's the beautiful thing about waxes. They can be used for protection on your piece, but they can also be used as just a pretty decorative accent.
My last step on these is going to be to add a little bit of Dixie Belle gilding wax in gold and I'm just going to hit the moldings ever so slightly. I want it to look kind of worn but I want it to catch the light so you really notice the curves on these. That's where they really shine. I want to keep these sim uh, finishes pretty simple and clean and so this is just the lightest bit of metallic that's going to tie in with the gold hardware that I plan to use on these. Gilding wax is an oil-based wax and so it reacts with the heat and the oils in your fingertips so you can get these nice smooth smudgy effects. Okay it is staging day and this is my second look for this piece. I'm doing this piece in three different finishes and so I wanted to keep the staging similar on each one so I kept it pretty simple where I've got a tall item over here um, that balances out my artwork. They're about the same height and then I just did a simple bouquet of flowers that ties in with my color scheme. So each different look is going to have the same basic layout of items um, but just done in the color scheme of the piece itself. So that's all I've done here. I'm going to go ahead and snap these couple pictures. Uh, I really think this is a nice soft romantic look. It completely changes the feel of this piece um, and I think the staging just helps that. And with that all three of these looks are ready for photographs and here they all are side by side the same piece in different uh, finishes and similar staging. I think they came out really cool, you guys. What do you think? Do you have a favorite color? Conk, Baja Gray, or the Wharf? Which one would you choose? This was really fun to do for me too. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the same piece in three different finishes. Um, if you guys did, click that subscribe button for a new video each week on my channel. Um, you can find a link for everything I used in this video in the description for this post. And as always, you can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com.